Hello, my name is Jeff Shu. I'm a technical program manager with Risk Five International, and I'm here today to share a few nuggets with you you can take on your career journey. Because our time is short, let's go ahead and just jump right in. I'm calling today's talk, what I wish I knew then that I know now. We could think of it as hindsight is 2020. Let me talk about where I began this journey and what my background is. I have a bachelor's in computer engineering from the University of California at Davis. I've worked 30 years in the industry, beginning at HP, working most of my career at IBM, spent a little bit of time at Canonical, and now I'm, I'm at the Linux Foundation working on RISC-V. Jobs I've had or areas I've worked in, we could call it firmware, hypervisors, operating systems, some of it closed source, some of it open source, most of it in and around Linux. Types of assignments, you can say, I've been a programmer, I've been a team lead, I've been an architect, a manager, a technical program manager, and a technical executive. Net net, I like to say, I've coded, I built, I've strategized, I've hired, I've fired, I've trained, promoted, and developed talent. And to this day, I remain committed to developing the next generation of technical leaders. What I wish I knew when I was getting started. We could spend hours on this topic. Reality is we'll distill it down to three key things that I think you can take away and apply and uh, really have a fruitful, it will help you get started down the right path in a fruitful career. First thing I would recommend as you're getting started is find somebody who works in your field and use them as a mentor. What do I mean by mentor? I've got that word in quotes. Well, first of all, I like to describe mentoring as a penalty-free environment. You can essentially ask anything which means you can then leverage this person to be your expert. You can get insight from them, you can get lessons from them. And because it's penalty free, when you're done, you're done, you can move on, find another mentor, or even have multiples at any given time. What might you ask these mentors early in your career? What did they do? How did they get there? Why did they do it? What lessons did they learn? And you can carry those, that sort of mentoring into jobs where as you begin to have your first full-time uh, employment experience, you'll questions like, uh, how do I get promoted? What does it take to get a raise? Why did my manager say that? Or what did they mean by this? These are all examples of what a mentor can do for you very early in your career. I'd be remiss. If you're looking for resources to not say, go look at the Risk Five mentorship program. We've got some great opportunities out there. Uh, those are activities both that you can do and people you can meet. But like I said, you'll also find mentors around your family, at your university, in your place of employment. Look around, find somebody you respect, leverage what they learn, and oh, by the way, someday you might be a mentor. Second item I'd recommend, early in your career, explore a variety of things so you can learn what you like and what you don't like. If you're still in college, that experience is likely something called an internship. I recommend students in technical degrees do at least one, if not two internships. These internships allow you to demonstrate and put on your resume the skills that you've acquired and the people who've evaluated those skills so that future employers can, can decide whether you'd be a good fit for them. On top of that, these internships pay quite well. Uh, they're for a fixed duration. At the end of the time, you get to go back to being a student and take the lessons that you've learned with you. For me personally, this was very critical. Growing up in a family of doctors, 
I had no tech people to ask questions of. So when I got to school, I discovered that I had a good friend on the basketball court who was a couple years ahead of me in a slightly different degree. But he said to me, Jeff, you need to do an internship. He said, I'll help you get your resume done. I'll get you to the interviews. You can do this. I'll help you. Well, turned out John was right. I did my first internship with IBM. That turned into a second internship, turned into a full-time job at some point later in my career. Uh, and yes, I rewarded John. He was best man at my wedding. Great advice. Really appreciated that. Helped me shape what I'm doing. In fact, I think you can argue that was a life-changing advice and set of decisions. Early on, when you do get that first job, you have additional opportunities of how to find these short-term assignments. Managers are constantly saying, if only we had enough time to do this, or maybe they'll go so far as to ask that a team or the department, anybody have some extra time to work on this special project? Studies have shown that early career employees that focus only on their topic or only on their area of expertise, even if they become very proficient, are not viewed as highly and regarded as well as those employees that branch out, help people with things, and I will argue volunteer for these sorts of activities. So one, you'll be perceived better, who you'll get an opportunity to work on something for a finite period of time. And you may ultimately out of it, learn that you like or don't like something that will shape your career as you move forward. So my second piece of advice is explore these opportunities either through internships or for volunteering for these sorts of special projects very early in your career. And that will really help you clarify your interests. Final thing I'd like to spend a little time talking about is open source software. As early tenure employees or college students, getting engaged in open source software, even if you want to be a hardware engineer, is a great way to learn skills and build your resume. Let's just admit software is everywhere. We're using spreadsheets, we're running tools that need scripting around the outside, there's APIs to everything. Software is everywhere. A lot of it and more of it every day is open source software. It is reshaping how technology is done. It's reshaping hiring and comp compensation. So this is a very good set of activities. So go find something that you enjoy in open source, whether it's you can be a tester, you can be a coder, you can do documentation and go engage and offer up some time in these communities. The side effect this has is it leaves again a public track record of things that you've done and it gives you a place outside of work where you can explore skills that you might not yet be at in your career or that you may need work on. Listen, there's nothing more humbling than when you go submit your first patch to a community and somebody comes back and tells you it could be better. We all need that experience of interacting with people technically and being able to do so in an open source community, build a public track record and engage in these sorts of activities is only going to make you a stronger employee in your nine to five day job. And besides, you may find you like some particular area and actually end up working there in the long run. So I think if you're looking for these sorts of opportunities, there are, of course, several risk five places that are on the screen here that you can look at. Uh, but really, any place in GitHub or GitLab or any of these open source communities is a great place to find a chance to engage with open source software. So my final advice to you is, you've got this, good luck. You obviously know that you're doing the right things because you're here, engaged in the career fair. You're going to be successful. So I have utmost confidence in you. Enjoy the rest of your career fair. Thank you very much for your time.